Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and today I'm here to talk to you about gamma. Um, if you stay tuned, very soon after this video comes out, in fact tonight, I will be posting another video where I will be talking about the basic usage of Geiger counters. In that video I will have many gamma producers as well as beta and alpha producers so you'll actually be able to see some samples and see what they're doing. Uh, I decided not to expose myself to them during this video as well so stay tuned for the next video. This video will talk to you about gamma. This is the word gamma, which refers to a particular type of radiation which I'll go into in a second. This is the lowercase Greek letter for G, the gamma symbol, lowercase. The uppercase letter looks like this. That's an uppercase uh, Greek G. Get rid of it because we don't need it on the screen. But this right here is usually used to show gamma, sometimes the other one as well. Gamma rays are light, photon photons pretty much. Uh, the light coming out of your light bulb, the radio signals floating through the air, X-ray radiation, ultraviolet, infrared, all of these various things are elect electromagnetic radiation. They're all specifically just forms of photons. If you get on the internet and you type in electromagnetic radiation, you often see one of those charts that shows uh, uh, TV signals and stuff on one end and they slowly become regular visible light and then it continues going into x-rays and then gamma rays and it moves across. That's because all of this comes from photons. A photon is a little packet of energy. Let me show you. <clears throat> this is an introductory vi video so I'm not going to go into too much detail with math or anything because you don't want that. That's why you don't watch inter introductory videos usually to understand math. If you want to know more about it, I can tell you though. Just email me and let me know. I will show you the equation, but I'm not going to require that you understand it in any conceivable way. <clears throat> the energy of a photon is equal to reduced Planck's constant multiplied by the speed of light divided by the wavelength. If you're a math person, that makes sense to you immediately. These two divided into that. If you're not a math person, then let me show you a picture that might make more sense. The energy that's contained in a photon is inversely proportionate to its wavelength. A low energy photon like light that you're seeing right now has a really, really long wavelength. A high energy photon like a gamma ray that penetrates so deeply has a very, 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 very short, narrow wavelength. They're both moving at the same speed. but this one takes less energy to do what this one does. So understand that. If I were to increase the energy of this one, like double or triple its energy, it would look like this. An even greater wavelength. Or sorry, an even shorter wavelength. So obviously, radio waves, visible light, gamma? Gamma, maybe? A photon is a particle of energy, a wave of energy, if you like. And when I say the two, they are sort of interchangeable because of something called particle wave duality, which doesn't mean that, it'll, that light is a particle, and it doesn't mean that it's a wave. It means that it's something like a wave and something like a particle. It kind of depends on how you look at it. But anyway, so when people say gamma wave or a gamma ray or a gamma particle, they're all technically sort of correct. Gamma can penetrate just about everything. If you remember from my previous videos, <clears throat> excuse me, I believe I explained that an alpha particle composed of two protons and two neutrons, very, very tightly bound and moving very, very fast, are capable of penetrating maybe a couple inches in the air. A simple sheet of paper can stop them, <clears throat> yet they're very deadly. I think I mentioned to you that a beta particle is an energetic high energy electron or positron particle that shoots really, really fast and <clears throat> it can go many many more inches before it stops but still you can stop it with maybe a thin sheet of aluminum excuse me <clears throat> a gamma is completely different you would need inches of lead to stop it if a worker walks into a place that has radiation such as a nuclear power plant their protective clothing they're wearing that may have a thin shield of lead, in, lead on it is a lining that, pen, that 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 can totally stop the ga uh, beta radiation coming to get them. The alpha is probably stopped by the cloth on the outside of the uh, shielding, but the gamma goes right through the shielding. It might reduce it a little bit, but not too much. Gamma is very hard to stop. Luckily, 
the very fact that gamma is hard to stop is what makes it less dangerous than alpha particles. Think about it for a second. If a gamma particle flies through the air and passes through your body, it hasn't actually interacted with you at all, because if it touched you anywhere, even the slightest bit, it would deposit that energy. So if it goes through you, because it's very penetrating, then it's not depositing the energy. And if it doesn't deposit the energy, then it isn't hurting you in any way. So gamma rays have a tendency to fly right through you quite often, which is very beneficial. If gamma rays stopped, it would be less beneficial, similar to x-rays. An x-ray is also a photon, just like a gamma particle, just like uh, any other photon. It's a little bit less powerful than a gamma, generally speaking. Although in reality, the range for what we call a gamma and what we call an x-ray sort of overlap, so it's kind of debatable which one is which. But a gamma is usually considered to be more powerful. Now let's talk about where gamma rays come from. Let me kind of erase this a little bit. Inside of an atom, you have, let me switch to a different marker. Inside of an atom, you have a nucleus and maybe a couple electrons. The nucleus is made up of protons and neutrons, which you've already learned are made of quarks. The nucleus is held together by something called the strong nuclear force. If an electron leaves, sometimes this can happen, or if energy is deposited in the atom by one means or another, the atom can enter a more highly energized state. Not the electrons per se, but the, the, the center, the nucleons, the, the, which, which, which form the nucleus. Let's look at two. Here is a neutron, here is a proton. They are held together tightly by something called the strong nuclear force, which has nothing to do with magnets or gravity or anything. It's another force. There are several forces in the universe. I should probably tell you about them in another video. But for right now, I understand these two are held tightly together. The more you pull them apart, the stronger the force holding them together gets, which is kind of also a strange thing. Most things in nature weaken as you get them apart, but not the strong nuclear force. It holds. That's why it's called the strong nuclear force. If this and this are pulled apart a little bit, they become unstable, and they wish to try to return to as close of a ground state as they can possibly get. They want to kind of rest and come to a rest. In order to come to a rest, they have to get rid of that energy. Now, sometimes they will instantaneously fire that energy off as a gamma ray, because energy will leave, and energy becomes mass, and that mass uh, can be an electron, or the energy can just fly off as a uh, gamma ray, so you get one or the other, usually. But another thing they can do is they can actually stay in a not quite stable, but not quite unstable, kind of like a gyrating sort of way for a while, and they can remain like that for a long time. They become something called metastable. To give you an example of metastable, if you're familiar with technetium-99, it's used a lot of time in medicine. It's a gamma emitter, used for gamma fluoroscopy, which is a way to like turn a human being into a pretty much walking, living, breathing x-ray machine. You ever see uh, technetium 99 m This is the metastable version. It will degrade and become stable after a while, after it really releases a high energy gamma particle. Whenever two of these things become stable and calm down, but to do so release a gamma ray, they're refer it's referred to as isomeric transition. Very, very, very uh, commonplace amongst atoms. When an atom kicks off a humongous heavy alpha particle, the nucleus is often left in a very unstable sort of way. It's trying to, like, you know, calm down because, oh my god, it just threw off two entire protons and two neutrons. That's a humongous change. And to do so, it often releases gamma particle. Similar things happen with beta particles. And that's why uh, the res uh, alpha and beta emitters have a tendency to release gamma, too. Uh, one little word of caution. If you're ever looking at the radiation that's emitted by a particular isotope, be careful. A lot of places do not mention the fact that an, an isotope produces gamma. They'll say it produces alpha, they'll say it produces beta, but they won't mention that it also produces gamma, which I've always thought to be kind of odd. Generally speaking, as a rule of thumb, most things that produce alpha also produce gamma, such as uranium or thorium. Anyhow, that's your basic rundown of gamma. Gamma is nothing more than a beam of energy, a little pulse of energy, if you like. It flies out in all directions, and it diminishes with distance. Alrighty, I thought I might also 
mention to you an interesting fact about radiation that has a lot to do with gamma, but it does technically also involve all other types of radiation too, generally speaking. Uh, it's called distance inverse square rule, but without going into math, because most people don't want to go into math, let's look at it from a conceptual standpoint. If this is a radiation emitter, and let's draw some more radiation so you understand it's emitting radiation every single direction. Every single direction of radiation is being emitted. Um, if you stand here, as opposed to standing here, as opposed to standing here, you're getting less and less of the radiation. The reason you're getting less radiation is because as you move away from the single source, there's the same amount of radiation having to expand into a larger and larger and larger volume of area. Gamma rays, of course, you work this way as well. The two ba biggest ways to stop yourself from being hit by a gamma ray are mass and distance. If you can put enough mass in between you and an object, such as, uh, let's say here's some rays coming out, if you place a big, big, big heavy piece of mass in front of you, a gigantic, humongous block of metal of some variety, for example, metals, metal is an extremely good mass, but quite frankly, dirt, uh, concrete, any of that will work. Some of these rays are going to... Let's get rid of that. Some of these rays are going to intersect that and become stopped. Some of them will still go right through it, though. It's kind of like shooting a gun through it in a forest. Think of the forest trees as being mass. Think of the gamma ray as a bullet. If you shoot a machine gun through a, a clearing, of, I mean through a, a, a swath of the trees, some of the bullets, in fact many of them, are going to hit the trees. And the more trees you have, the more likelihood they will. But some are going to go straight through and come out the other side. So just take that into account. The other thing that helps you, of course, is distance. If I'm over here, I'm only exposed to one ray. If I'm here, I'm being exposed to two. If I'm here, I'm being exposed to three, four, five. And if I got right up on it, like right here, I might be getting exposed to even more than that. And of course, in reality, it's more than four or five rays. Gamma radiation is produced by so many different things, and it's flying through our bodies right now. <clears throat> Gamma radiation even comes from space. Let me see if I can pull up an example of that. Uh, let's see here. I think I have a good example of it. There we go. While on an airplane, one might be exposed to a pretty good amount of uh, gamma radiation. Here is uh, counts per minute of radiation. This is how many little ticks per minute you get of radiation. To give you an idea, these counts, these are counts per minute. <coughs> 600. 500, 400, 300 down. Look down here in the 3 to 400 range. 3 to 400 counts per minute. While on an airplane, I was exposed to 3 to 400 counts per minute of radiation. See? This radiation was the result of being 36,000 feet in the air and being exposed to gamma from space. Gamma rays come flying in from space all of the time. Gamma ray bursts are another interesting phenomenon. Let me see if I can pull up a gamma ray burst. I believe I have a picture of what I think to be. Here we go. Let me pull this right up. Let that load. I believe I was. I believe I hit a gamma ray burst one day. As you can see, I'm down in the 20 to 30 count range, and I'm moving right along. And then all of a sudden, boom! See that? That spike. I believe that this spike was a gamma ray burst. Of course, I don't have a lot of proof of it, other than some anecdotal things, but gamma rays come down from space all of the time, cosmic radiation. They're very, very common. You can see right here, there's my counts. I hit 36 counts per minute all of a sudden, 14 is my normal, but just for one little short brief burst. And <clears throat> if you've watched my videos, you've also seen or for example, I found some radioactive plates one time and those were of course emitting gamma radiation as well but anyhow so that concludes my explanation of uh, gamma radiation gamma radiation is nothing more than high energy photons x-rays are basically the same exact thing high energy photons generally a little bit less energy than a um, standard gamma ray 
but of course they can pass through most anything and they pass through your body when you're exposed to them at the doctor's office or the airport and as they pass through your body they have a higher chance based on mass of interacting with your bones so more of them get blocked and that's why you start getting an image on the screen of uh, your hand but they are still harmful even though they are less harmful than other radiation if for no other reason then they're harder to stop than most other radiation but regardless this has been Tom from anti-proton.com. Bye-bye.